Um, apologies to those of you who have seen Anne's presentations before. Uh, this is the obligatory what is Anne slide, which we update slightly every time. Um, just for a bit of background as to what we are, we're supported by the Australian Federal Government. Uh, we began in 2000, at the beginning of 2009. Uh, and we have recently had our funding extended until the end of 2014. Uh, so that's nice. Uh, so uh, as part of the Australian Federal Government's Collaborative Research Infrastructure Scheme. Um, we are a collaboration between Monash University, which is where I'm based, the CSIRO, who are the uh, Federal Government funded scientific research agency, and the Australian National University, uh, who are based in Canberra. Um, we have six city, staff in six cities across the country, so we, um, we have staff based at all of the capital cities of the various Australian states. Um, and we have been doing funding uh, for around 250 projects across the country in various aspects of data management, and I'll talk very briefly about some of the big things that have come out of that, um, just to give you an idea of uh, what we've been doing and how it's, it's changed the environment. So what we've been trying to do as part of ANS is uh, to establish uh, some national services, and I'll run through a couple of those national services very quickly in a minute, um, to populate what we call the Australian Research Data Commons. Uh, the Research Data Commons is uh, not a physical thing or a particular space. It's any research data that is available for reuse and is described and is out there um, is part of the Research Data Commons. Um, but we've also tried to manage and to encourage that the, the data that is managed properly, connected, is discoverable and is reusable. Uh, we've been doing this by partnering with institutions, so we, the, the funding that we have done has been at an institutional level rather than with individual researchers, the, although there's been lots of researchers involved. Um, and the idea is to try and encourage the, the institutions to have uh, a consistent institutional research data infrastructure and a coherent one that works across the institution. So, while we've funded many small projects, what we're looking for is a move towards a wide, ongoing way of dealing with research data management. Um, and part of that is trying to improve the way that the system works and to ex allow people to exploit their, re their research data better. So we have been looking to develop tools, create policy, uh, and to develop human cap capability across the sector so that there are more people who are working uh, in the data management space, and you know, there was a, the, the topic that we were discussing yesterday afternoon, is part of that, this idea of where are these people going to come from, where are the skills, how can we make sure there's enough people to support the amount of research that's going on. So I'm not going to go into great detail to all these national services, a couple that I want to highlight. Um, one is Research Data Australia, and I'll talk about that a bit more in a sec. Um, the other one is that we're finding is getting a lot of interest and, uh, and helps people to feel, see why they might want to get into the research data management <coughs> area is uh, Cite My Data, so the ability to put a DOI onto a data set um, as a way of making that a persistently citable object um, is something that we find really resonates with researchers in a way that a lot of the other stuff we talk about doesn't. <coughs> Um, you know, this idea that you'll be able to get credit for your research in a way that is demonstrably that particular data set um, has been a really uh, popular idea. Um, we're still just starting to roll that out in a sort of substantial way in Australia, but uh, that's one of the things that we, we find is a really interesting service. Um, and there's, like I say, a lot of other ones there, and I, I won't even try and read them all out. Um, if you want to, if you're interested in them, you know, I'm here all day, come and talk to me. Um, so Research Data Australia is, our, is our, our, our window into the research data that's available in Australia. It has descriptions of uh, around 44,000 collections. Um, that's what the number was when I looked at it the other day. Um, and then we have, within that system as well, uh, researchers, um, uh, and research staff who are involved in the creation of those records so that it's a, a link system so you can find out, well, if you're interested in this data set, you can find out what else was created by the same person. If you find out a particular person, you can find out what data they've created, what institution they belong to, uh, what funding uh, they did that so that you can make all the connections. 
Um, Research Data Australia is, is there as one front end, but the pages within it are all indexed by Google. Uh, to return to what you know, Herbert was saying this morning, we don't expect people necessarily to go to Research Data Australia to find things. Uh, what we do, do we hope is they'll find them in Google and then they'll come to Research Data Australia and follow the connections through. Um, <coughs> we currently have 62 different data sources, which are people who are submitting uh, that data to it, so that's most of the universities in Australia and a large number of um, various research organisations, uh, other projects that are, have done great data as well. And I was hoping we would have 2012 numbers, but the techies haven't been able to give it to me this week, so you know we're seeing a reasonable amount of use data and the, the use is increasing. So we've also been working as a funder of projects, as I said before, primarily at an institutional level. Um, we've had a number of different types of programs, some of them are around infrastructure, so they're around developing software that will allow for better management of data, <coughs> it might be capturing it from an instrument, it might be what we call metadata stores, which is a data catalogue at an institutional level. Um, <coughs> we have also been working with uh, research groups on applications to use the data once they've captured it. Um, and uh, also with public sector bodies to try and capture their research data. So that is then made available more easily for others. Um, and as I said before, we've been trying to build the human capacity by uh, having a couple of programs that are around training, around uh, discovery, um, around getting into the idea of how you can do an institutional policy, how you can talk to people, uh, getting a sense of what your institution actually has in terms of research data, and one of the things that we found when we started is that most institutions had very, almost no idea of what research data was there. Um, they didn't know who was doing what, they didn't know how big it was, it was a, a black hole. So part of that then has been trying to do, has been trying to uh, put in place a bunch of uh, these sort of tools and frameworks and capacity. So as I said before, working on how you can do uh, institutional data management. Uh, those of you who saw Anthony Beats' talk yesterday will have heard reference to the Australian Code for the Responsible Conduct of Research, um, which does have very explicit recommendations in it around the role of both the institution and the researcher in the uh, management of their research data. And it's not a either-or thing. Both, part, both parts are expected to have a role to play. Um, and so we've been trying to actually help both those sides make, that, make it possible for their, their role to be played. Um, and that's been a really interesting driver in the sense that, there, as Anthony again suggested, there's no actual teeth behind that. If, if you know, you're not complied with the of the code, at the moment nothing bad happens to you. But all the universities in Australia are assigned to it, that they take it very seriously. Um, so we've been looking at data management planning frameworks, trying to get more people who can work in this area, trying to create more tools. If you're interested in the tools that we've been creating, we have a uh, page off our website called uh, projects.ams.org.au, which lists links to all the tools. Everything we develop is open source, so you know if you want to come along and have a look at stuff, use it, please do. Um, same with the, cool, the tools that, collect, that, that create metadata, you know, the metadata store software that we've been working on. Um, and then getting all of these descriptions fed back to Research Data Australia so that we can uh, make it available. So we spent all this money, it's been a lot of money, it's been a lot of work over a number of time, a long time. Um, what we have gone from is uh, in 2009 when we started, uh, there's about 40 universities in Australia. At the time there were about eight who had some form of capability in data management. Uh, mostly that was to do with they had started on a data management policy or they put in some sort of institutional store and that was pretty much it. They hadn't really thought about it at a, at a systemic level. Um, they didn't really have a strong understanding of what they actually had in place. There weren't a lot of data management tools and the ones that were out there were often bespoke or bitsy sort of things that someone had put in place to solve a particular problem and they weren't terribly well supported. Now we see that most of the universities in Australia have got some capacity um, in a much wider range of areas. So it might be with tools, it might be with uh, metadata, it might be with policy and planning, it might be um, any sort of uh, thing to do with data management, multiple storage. 
Uh, 34 of the universities have now got some form of discoverable data that we know of. Uh, we expect we'll have you know, pretty much all of them by the end of the year. Uh, 28 have had a good hard look at what they've got and been able to identify retrospective data sets, identify key researchers, identify particular areas of work. Um, and we've seen a large number of tools and policies and other instruments be made available. And again, you know, projects.ants will give you a wide range of that. What I'd just like to talk about quickly in the end now, I think, is some of the instances we've seen of how these projects have actually impacted research. Because one of the things we hear about is, well, this is all very lovely, but I'm a researcher and I'm busy and I want to actually have my life improved by doing this research data management stuff. So, this is the Parkes Telescope, it's the, uh, in New South Wales. Um, the researchers at the CSIRO um, have made their data freely available now of their research. Uh, they went, one of them went to a talk in China and said, I've got this data out there. A bunch of Chinese researchers looked at that data set and without ever having access to the telescope were able to actually discover stuff in their field of research that they had not been able to do previously. So they're called glitch events. Um, but it, you know, it was, it was a win-win for both because the CSIRO researcher got some new collaborators, the researchers from China got some new research papers. There was no impact on the Australian researchers because they weren't interested in that particular field. They weren't interested in looking for that. They didn't miss anything. It wasn't what they were looking for. For the Chinese, it gave them an opportunity to look at something they had. So it's been a really nice thing, and they are uh, now working on papers together. Um, this is on a database based at the University of New South Wales where they track antibiotic resistance. Um, it is, I bet the researcher involved in this, it is one of the most terrifying uh, discussions you'll ever have when they tell you how much antibiotic resistance there is out there now. Um, but they are looking at trying to understand the way that this is happening, the way that it's going. They've been bringing together this stuff internationally and since they launched this project, this database about 18 months ago, they've had another 40 new genes discovered and 10 of which are, have major impact on the way they do science. So, um, you know, it's a really nice thing where scientists are coming together, they've standardised a lot of the way they describe these things so that people know what's happening. Um, life patterns, this is a, a longitudinal study on uh, the way teenagers, or on the, uh, the way people grow up, so starting when they're teenagers, following their life through. Um, they put a whole lot of their stuff on, uh, up online and as a result they are in fact uh, now getting collaboration with overseas uh, researchers who have discovered this data and said let's work together. Red map, one of my favourites, uh, that fellow there is the gloomy octopus. Um, the uh, red map is a, a citizen science project where they uh, encourage people to report sightings of marine life that is in a location that it is not expected to be. Uh, it's mostly fishermen and um, scuba divers. The fishermen always produce fish, photos of dead fish, and the scuba divers always provide, provide photos of live ones. Um, but this is a way of identifying, and because someone identified the gloomy octopus in Tasmania, where it's not normally been found, uh, there's now a research project with a Mexican researcher on trying to understand why this, this octopus has moved so far south and why it skipped Victoria, which is, you know, the map of Australia, is in between. They haven't sighted any of these in Victoria. They're all turning up in Tasmania, having previously been in New South Wales. And the same national corpus, which is a linguistics corpus, where a whole bunch of researchers from across the country got together and said, let's bring our linguistics data together, put it into one place, and let's see what happens. And we're already seeing new projects coming out of that because people have been able to say, oh, well, I'm interested in this and you've got that data set and I have this data set, let's bring them together and do new things. So, uh, you know, really nice projects, very exciting. Quick mention of the, the, you know, there was the mention about the international um, and how important that is and how, and, and some of you will have heard of the Research Data Alliance, ANS is Australia's representative on that. Um, it's a really interesting new project of trying to take the stuff that we've been doing and see how that fits into an international context. And uh, you know, we see that as actually one of the key areas that we'll be working on over the next couple of years. And that's it. Thank you.